welcome back. Um, this is episode 13 of Worrying Wednesday. All right, guys, so it's that time of year. If you're watching this uh, close to the time that it's being recording, then you know that we are in the holiday season. It is full fledged ahead. Um, Christmas is, I think, 17 days away at this point, um, and things are in full swing. So um, I thought today's message is awesome considering what all is swirling around and um and let's just dive into what it means to keep our focus on jesus during especially a season like this which is just full of distractions and things that are trying to pull us in a hundred different directions most of the time all right focus what are you focusing on this season are you running to and fro checking off your lists are you hurrying from one event to the next moving, uh, maxing out your calendar? Are you fixing your eyes on your finances and the items you wish to buy? Or are you fixing your eyes on the cross and focusing on what really matters? Nothing else matters, only Jesus. So let go of the worry, the stress, the sense of obligation and rest in the presence of your savior. Isn't that what this season is supposed to focus on? Isn't he the reason we are celebrating? Take a look at your traditions. Where does he fit in? Where is he illuminated? Where is he the focus of your attention and time? It's time, time to let go of all which does not point, which does not point to our Lord and to pick up your cross and point others toward him. Focus, focusing our Christmas upon the savior. Where has your focus been off? Where can you bring more of him in? Help us keep our eyes fixed on you, Father, focusing on what really matters this season. All right, guys, so lots to unpack there. Before we do that, we're going to um, read through Psalms 2, which I've chosen the, the message translation of it today because it's just written beautifully and it really reiterates um, what you just heard in the reading there about, you know, what are we focusing on? What is the, the point of this season? Um, and, and let's get rid of all these distractions, all the things that are coming in that are really not for him, from him or of him that are really just causing destruction in a lot of ways. And let's keep our eyes fixed on the prize and what really matters here. All right. So this is Psalms to the passion translation. And it, it's what's really neat. Um, I'm a previous English teacher, so I love this, but it's broken down into acts. It has four acts. Uh, they each have a title, and so I'm going to read those as we go along. But uh, the title of the psalm is called The Coronation of the King. And isn't that what we're celebrating this season? Like our king has been born. He has been coronated. He has come to save us. He has truly been delivered into this world for our salvation. Um, so it's this coronation of the king in this season. All right, Act 1 is titled The Nations Speak. How dare the nations plan a rebellion? They're Foolish plots are futile. Look at how the power brokers of the world rise up to hold their summit as the rulers scheme and confer together against Yahweh and his anointed king saying, let's come together and break away from the creator. Once and for all, let's cast off these controlling chains of God and his Christ. Act two, God speaks. God enthroned merely laughs at them. The sovereign one mocks their madness. Then with the fierceness of his fiery anger, he settles the issue and terrifies them to death with these words. I myself have poured out my king on Zion, my holy mountain. Act three, the sun speaks. I will reveal the eternal purpose of God, for he has decreed over me, you are my favored son. And as your father, I have crowned you as my king eternal. Today, I became your father. Ask me to give you the nations and I will do it. 
and they shall become your legacy. Your domain will stretch to the ends of the earth, and you will shepherd them with unlimited authority, crushing their rebellion as an iron rod smashes jars of clay. Act 4, the Holy Spirit speaks. Listen to me, all you rebel kings and all you upstart judges of the earth. Learn your lesson while there's still time. Serve and worship the awe-inspiring God. Recognize his greatness and bow before him, trembling with reverence in his presence. Fall face down before him and kiss the sun before his anger is roused against you. Remember that his wrath can be quickly kindled, but many blessings are waiting for all who turn aside to hide themselves in him. All right, what a beautiful psalm, right? Um, so it's really neat how it was broken down into the four acts and how it really gives you like the transition of the speaker. So when the nations are speaking at the beginning, they're talking about, and here's the connection that, that I see through this. Um, think about this season that we're in, right? We're going to connect all of this to the current season that we're walking out, which is this holiday season. We're between Thanksgiving and Christmas. This is a time that even though biblically Jesus wasn't born on, a, on December 25th, we know that this is the time that our nation has chosen to honor. That's uh, the United States, if you're watching this from any other country. Um, but the United States has chosen to honor the birth of Jesus on December 25th, right? We recognize this as Christ Ma Christmas, Christ Mass, um, and it's supposed to be a celebration that focuses on the birth of Jesus. Now let's get real for a minute, and this is, might be a little hard to hear, but we're supposed to be iron, right? Sharpening one another. How much of your season is really spent focused on that, right? We have the nations coming in, right? The plot of the enemy coming in, trying to distract us, our calendars are more full in the month of December than like any other month of the year. Um, there's holiday parties from this and that. There's that sense of obligation to attend everything, uh, or a lot of people struggle with that. Um, your financials, your pocketbook is stretched this month because there there is a lot of giving. It's a lot of giving within the family. It's a lot of giving to you know maybe coworkers, neighbors, things like that, which is beautiful to show that love. Um, and uh, let's see, so you have the, the calendar, right? Your timeline, you have your finances. Um, and then you just have the distractions of everything else. Like, hey, um, did you put your lights up? Do you have holiday decor up? What does your tree look like? How many trees are in your house? I mean, consumerism is, the whole, is at an all-time high. And how much of that is really focused on what really matters, which is Jesus. And isn't that what this holiday is all about? It's about Jesus. So I say this, um, this is not coming from a condemning place. So if you're hearing this and you're feeling condemned, you shake that off because that is not what this is about. You know, it's beautiful. The, the, the decorations are beautiful. The holiday parties are beautiful. The giving of gifts are wonderful. There's so much beauty in that. But the point here is how much, like how much in this season are we focused on all the doing, all the things that naturally come with it without a heart posture that's facing God. How often do we let all of that, let all the, the whirlwind and the swirl and the chaos that naturally comes with this season, which there's a lot of beauty in it, how often does it distract us and stress us out and create a sense of worry or, um, um, or being overwhelmed or maybe discouraged? To the point to where you've taken your eyes off the prize. You've taken your eyes off of Christ and what this season is supposed to be all about. And you're fixing it on the world. You're fixing it on the nations, right? And everything going on. Um, and what it's one of my favorite verses, but in Act 2 here where it says God speaks, he sits on his throne and he laughs, guys. He's laughing at the plot of the enemy. He's laughing at these nations, these people who are persecuting him and who are, um, you know, essentially mocking him or trying to destroy what he has created because in the end he knows, right? He knows who's going to win. He knows how this is going to play out. We know the end of the story. So now we come to the sun, the sun speaks, and this is it. This is what it's all about. The, my favorite line in this was, um, 
And as your father, I have crowned you as my king eternal. So Father God has crowned Jesus as the king eternal. Today, I become your father. That is Jesus speaking to us. Today, Jesus becomes our father. So on Christmas Day, on the day that we're celebrating this birth of Jesus, he becomes our father, right? That's what that's all about. And when we take a moment to really digest and process that, that, oh my goodness, he was truly delivered into this world to become the father of all nations, the king of all nations. And, and the reverence that that, that that holds and the symbolism behind it. And, um, you know, especially as from the beginning to the end, God knew all that would happen. He was sovereign in that. And he loved us enough to allow his son to step into this role. How beautiful is that? Uh, and then at the end here, we have the breakdown of the Holy Spirit speaks. And it's that warning. It's that warning of, hey, recognize his greatness and bow before him. Tremble with reverence in his presence, right? In his presence. Notice that. So if we're not getting into his presence, if this season is pulling you out of all the things that really matter because you're getting so worked up and stressed out or focused on the things that while they're lovely and they're good, how much do they matter when we're when we're thinking about eternity? How much does it matter when you're really thinking about Jesus and keeping your eyes on the cross? Um, serve and worship the awe-inspiring God, right? That's what we're to be doing this season. We're to be serving him. We're to be worshiping him. We're to be looking at him and like with this awe-inspiring, wow, God, you're amazing. It's amazing what you did for us. It's amazing how much you love us. Um, and then, but many blessings are waiting for all who turn aside to hide themselves in him. And what an interesting turn of phrase, to hide themselves in him. How do we hide ourselves in Jesus? How do we hide ourselves in him, right? How do we do that? Um, and I kind of like last week when we talked about resting, we hide in his, we hide in him when we're in his presence, when we're full of the Holy Spirit. Much of what we've talked about over the weeks leading up to this, right? About getting rid of the junk in you, filling yourself with the Holy Spirit, coming into an intimate relationship with Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, which we can only do by spending quality time, right? By spending quality time with them, we begin to know their voice. We begin to know um, his will. We begin to know like the direction that he's calling. And then we're able to rest in that presence of God. And we're able to hide ourselves in him because as we diminish, as we decrease, he is increasing. And so we are hiding ourselves in him because we're so full of the presence of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is flowing through us to where when we, you know, when our calendar gets out of whack or our finances may seem off this time of year or whatever other stress is coming in, it's not causing us to sway. It's not causing us to get off balance because our foundation is so strong because we're focusing on what really matters. We're keeping our eyes fixed on the cross. We're focusing on Jesus and what this season is really about. And we're cultivating that atmosphere in our homes, in our workplace, in every place that we go. You know, have you been out in public recently or started to and you start to see the people who are getting real grumpy this, this time of year? Well, how much of the presence of the Lord is in them, right? Because he gives the spirit, spirit of joy. I mean, that's one of the fruits of the spirit. So if we're walking around grumpy right now or you're seeing that, that means joy is absent. And isn't this a season of celebration? Isn't this a season where we're to be full of joy because we are looking at what Jesus or what God did when he sent his son down to be delivered into this world to atone for our sins, to, to save us essentially. And we're to celebrate that. We're to keep our eyes fixed on that. And we're to be full of joy for what the Lord has done. No matter what the season looks like, no matter um, if you have the abundance or the famine, whether you're walking out this season alone for the first time or or you're surrounded by loved ones, 
the more that we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the more that we keep that joy inside of us, then the more that we are resting in his presence and we are actually hiding ourselves in him to where we're protected. The enemy's not coming in and trying to attack. He's not getting in through maybe the family that you're meeting up with and you know, you've got that conflict going on or those differing opinions or whatever it is, or the you know person at the checkout who is just not happy about their life and their job right now. Like these little things aren't gonna get to you as you continue to hide in his presence. Um, okay, so going back to some of the reading, focus, and it's kind of cool to give us another acronym this week, but focus, um, focusing our Christmas upon the Savior. And what a great acronym to just like in a moment to where you can feel maybe something starting to stir you, agitate you, frustrate you, focus. Focus our Christmas on the Savior. How much are you doing that in your home? How much are you doing that on the day-to-day? -day? Um, and just take time to look at that. Remember, He is the reason that we are celebrating this season. Um, and we are to keep our eyes fixed on that because nothing else matters. Nothing else matters other than Jesus. And how simple is that? All right, I think that's it for this week. Shorter one. Um, hopefully you are having a blessed holiday season and you are walking in that. Um, Father God, my prayer is just that any eyes who see this, any ears who hear this, that that they receive the words that you want them to, Father, that that let this be your will um, over ours. And, and whatever it is that you are trying to fine tune and work on us, I just ask that there is a spirit to receive um, and that there is a wisdom that follows suit, God. In your mighty name I pray, amen. All right, guys, have a blessed season. Don't forget to check out his collection apparel. Um, you can shop for the holiday season. If you purchase over $75, you get free shipping. It's not too late to order, so you can get your Jesus gear in time for the holidays. From his heart to mine to yours, have a blessed day.